Hello, my name is Hiba Barud. I'm a PhD student in the School of Industrial and Systems Engineering at the University of Oklahoma. My research area is in risk analysis and decision making in interdependent systems. Today I'm talking about the implementation of a non-Gaussian kernel model for binary classification. More specifically, I am using the beta Bayesian kernel model to investigate resilience-based importance measures of components and infrastructure systems. Critical infrastructure systems, such as transportation systems, have been vulnerable in the past decade to numerous disruptive events, including accidents, natural disasters, and man-made attacks. Why are we living with a power supply always on the edge of disaster? And these daytime pictures we're beginning to see help us get a much better sense of the scope of the devastation and the challenge of the recovery effort. Now For example, Hurricane Sandy left areas of the highly populated East Coast without electric power, communication, and mass transit systems for several days. The Department of Homeland Security announced a set of grant programs targeting different areas prone to willful attacks or natural disasters. The grants aim at providing resources helpful in supporting the National Preparedness Goal and succeeding in its mission of ensuring a secure and resilient nation. Now risk managers have often been concerned about preparedness for such events and efforts to avoid the system from being disrupted. Little attention was given to the aftermath of a disruption, how the system is or should be recovering, what are the dynamics involved in the recovery process. This is where resilience is considered. The resilience of a system is its ability to bounce back to its functional state after it had been disrupted. When it comes to risk analysis, resilience has generally been investigated from a qualitative perspective. There has been an interest recently in quantifying resilience to improve the accuracy of modeling the recovery process after a disruption. The ratio of recovery over loss as a function of time is one way to model recovery by dynamically tracking the resilience value over time. Other resilience measures have been developed with respect to time to full recovery or cost of recovery. In our case, we are interested in identifying critical components that will impact the overall recovery of the system. We consider the resilience worth of a system component, which is an index that quantifies how the time to total reco network recovery is improved if this component is invulnerable. The index is a number between 0 and 1, where 0 represents a non-impactful component, while the resilience worth of 1 represents a highly impactful component. In order to estimate such index, we propose to use a Bayesian kernel model. Integrating Bayesian methods with kernel methods has recently gained a lot of attention. Bayesian methods use prior data sets in order to estimate posterior probability distributions, while kernel models try to recognize a certain pattern in the data set by mapping this data to a higher dimensional space. The integration of Bayesian and kernel methods allows for a classification algorithm which provides probabilistic outcomes as opposed to deterministic outcomes. That is, rather than assigning a class to a data point, Bayesian kernel methods assign a probability that the data point belongs to a particular class. Since the resilience worth is a value between 0 and 1, it would be appropriate to model this metric using the beta Bayesian kernel model. The resulting posterior follows the beta distribution with posterior parameters alpha star and beta star that are a function of the prior parameters. The model has been tested using several data sets, pro proving a good level of accuracy and fast computation time. The probabilistic output is the main benefit of using this model. One possibility is to base the risk analysis on a point estimate, such as the expected value of the posterior distribution, and examine the resilience worth of a component based on this estimate. The larger the estimate is, the more impactful is the component. Another possibility is to perform the risk analysis using the entire probability distribution and not only one point estimate. This has a great benefit in assessing the resilience worth of similar components. To perform such analysis, we use the Copeland score method, which is a stochastic ranking technique. The Copeland score is computed based on pairwise comparisons between objects in a set 
and is defined as the difference between the number of times an object A is better than the other objects and the number of times that object A is worse to the other object. All of this comparison is done with respect to the same attribute QK. The Copeland score of object A is then obtained by adding CAB over all B, each representing the other objects. The object with the largest Copeland score value is assumed to stochastically dominate all other objects with respect to the set of attributes. We use this approach to analyze the resilience worth of locks and dams on the Mississippi River Transportation Network. The river has 29 locks acting as key connectors between different ports nationwide. The data retrieved from the database collected by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers contains detailed information on each lock's characteristics, including the river mile, the total number of vessels passing by the lock, the total tonnage, and the frequency and average delay for the vessels and tows experiencing delay time due to the lock's closure. No data is available for the resilience worth, but we assume that such data can be elicited from risk managers or government officials. Given the characteristics of each lock and them, an individual can be asked to classify whether it is impactful or non-impactful. Using the beta Bayesian kernel model and a uniform beta distribution for the prior, we compute the posterior distribution parameters alpha star and beta star, and we plot the distribution for the expected value. The distribution is dispersed around a range of values going from approximately 0.25 to 0.4. The variability is mainly due to the data set being small. Also, the median of the distribution reflects the actual number of positive classification originally in the data. Instead of looking at a zero or one classification, risk managers now can assess this probabilistic outcome in order to determine the degree to which this component is impactful to the resilience of the entire system. All of this helps achieve a better and more accurate allocation of resources. Now in some cases, point estimates can be similar among components, and this is due to the characteristic of those components. In order to compare components with similar expected values, we need to take into consideration the entire posterior probability distribution. More specifically, we look at the five most impactful components that have similar expected values. Looking at the cumulative posterior probability distribution, it is really hard to distinguish which component is really ranked first and which is ranked fifth. Using the Copeland score method with approximated percentiles of the resilience worth as attributes, we compute the Copeland score for each of these components. We notice that according to the Copeland score, the rank is no longer the same as the one suggested by the expected value. Being able to accurately rank the components of our infrastructure system influences two things. First, it influences the amount of resources that is being allocated to each component. And second, in case of a disruptive event, it influences the order in which those components will be repaired. Analyzing the risk in infrastructure systems suffers from the scarcity of the data due to the nature of the problem dealing with disruptive events that do not often occur. Using a beta Bayesian kernel model is very beneficial for determining the importance measure of components in an infrastructure system. On one hand, the prior data required can be easily elicited from risk managers, and on the other hand, the outcome can be used to make stochastic inferences. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to meeting you in December for my first time at the SRA annual meeting in Baltimore.